Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nice to be back with you all this morning. And how many of you remember what we spoke last week? Seeing through God's eyes, that's what I said. A vision for yourself, of your future, what's going to happen to you, or anything that you want to do. You need to have a vision. And we said, with our own eyes, we cannot see the right thing. So we want to see through God's eyes. And I told you four points. One is prayer. Second is waiting on the Lord. Third is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the fourth one is having the mind of Christ. So these four things. Uh, I do not know if you have, if you have uh, or you had an opportunity to work on that. If you did not, uh, it's good for you because see the, uh, the idea of teaching is that you may be benefited. We all must be benefited spiritually uh, that we may grow into a higher level spiritually. The, all that we are trying to do at the end of the day is we want to be in God's kingdom when God, Jesus comes to take us back home. So everything that we need to do, we have to do. We have to be in the plan of God. And uh, so in these four points, uh, one of the points which is important, because I said have fellowship with Holy Spirit. So any of, how many of you really understood how to have fellowship with Holy Spirit? I said you have fellowship, I said, in various reasons. Uh, but how many of you really understand and know how to have fellowship with Holy Spirit? Few people questioned me, asked me how to have fellowship with Holy Spirit. Then I felt it's important for us to learn this morning how to have fellowship with Holy Spirit. Uh, I have two parts in this message. The first part, I will once again establish in your heart how important Holy Spirit is for us in our life. I may use the same scriptures which I used in my last message, but you must know that Holy Spirit is such an important thing. I'm saying thing is not a thing. Important person in our life. More than our nearest person, more than our father, mother, our wife, our husband, and so on. He's the most important person because He is the one Jesus left with us to help us prepare for His coming. He's the only help that we have. I normally say, God gave us His only begotten Son as a gift, as a blessing to us because He loved us. That's number one. But Jesus gave us three important things. One is His own name. He gave us His name to us. We can use His name and pray. And, we can, and prayers are answered. We can use His name and cast out demons. We can use His name and heal the sick. I mean, for everything, His name is a powerful thing. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, they are safe. So such powerful is His name. That's two. Uh, uh, his name. Uh, then, Jesus gave His word to us. The word, the sword of the Spirit. And that's wonderful. So we use the sword of the Spirit to work against the, or uh, fight against the evil one, the, the evil spirits. And the third one is, He gave us His Holy Spirit as a gift to us. So that He will be a friend to us. He will be a comforter to us. He will lead us, guide us. So it's very important for us to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. I know many of us or all of us have heard about Holy Spirit. We heard teachings on Holy Spirit in this church. Sometimes other than this church you would have heard. And some of you are well experienced and walking with the Spirit and in the Spirit. And many of you have that fellowship with Holy Spirit on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not that new for you. However, the importance we need to know, if you know that is important, you'll make it a point to have it. For example, in this country, uh, to have an uh, insurance for your life, to, to, to have your uh, visa stamped, it's, it's a must. So if it's a must, what will you do? Surely, you'll insure yourself. I never used to believe in insurance. But now I have no choice because of the law, I have to have insurance. I always believed God will take care of me and He did. Uh, this 61 years, almost 61 years, God did take care of me without insurance. Thank God. So, but then it becomes necessary. We have to do it in, according to the law of the, uh, of the country. Now, what I want to tell you is, without Holy Spirit, we cannot make it to eternal life. Will you agree with me? 
He has been given as a help, as an aid, as a guide, as a leader for us to make it to eternal life. Without Him, we cannot make it. There's another word that says, without me, you can do nothing. Jesus, God says, without me, you can do nothing. And Holy Spirit is God. So therefore, we learn few scriptures. I'll quickly take you. First thing, we need to have fellowship. We already always give this benediction. And I'm reading this from Amplified Version, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The last verse. We use it in the benediction, but I'm going to expand it and read it for you. Amplified, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the favor and spiritual blessing of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence and fellowship and the fellowship in the brackets it says the communion and sharing together and participation the fellowship means the communion and sharing together and participation in Holy Spirit be with you all amen this is a benediction given by Paul to the church of Corinth so it's an important thing to have fellowship with Holy Spirit, participation, communion with Him, a continual fellowship with Him is an important thing. And then Jesus gave us this promise in book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, He will give you, He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. Abide is constantly staying with you. He's not a visitor anymore. Holy Spirit used to visit prophets, give a word from the Lord, and prophet used to speak under the power of the Holy Spirit, but then he never used to abide with them in the past. Only after the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit began to live with, with the church. Amen? Alright. And abide with you forever. Ever means forever. Now forever, because on earth, forever. Afterwards, we finish with earth, He's also going to be with us in heaven because He's with God and God is with us and we are with God. Amen. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it is neither sees Him nor knows Him but you know Him for He dwells with you and will be in you. These two things you need to understand. He's always walking with us. A friend can walk with me. If I say Brother Ram is my friend, we can meet and we can talk and He's with me. But what he cannot do is he cannot be in me as a human being. But Holy Spirit is not only with you to have full fellowship and communion with him. Holy Spirit is in us constantly dwelling with us. That's a very important point there. And what he will do is Holy Spirit, he, what he does for is in John chapter 16 verse 13. John 16, 13. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. I told you last week, everything we do not know, or everything I or any one of the pastors or any preacher that comes cannot preach to you in the life that you're going to spend in the church. Or nor when you read your word, you get every thing of understanding uh, from the word itself. But Holy Spirit being inside of you keeps on Making you to understand the truth that belongs to God. Because He's inside you. He's your teacher. Constant teacher. So that's what He's going to do. All truth. He will lead, he'll guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority. I want you to take this word. He is not going to say anything that comes to His mind. He hears. What it says is, but whatever He hears, He will speak. You know, it talks the, 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 uh, the communion uh, among the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Anything they did, they did it together. If Jesus healed a sick person, Father was in it, Holy Spirit was in it, and together did it, even though Jesus himself appeared to people. Because the night before, Jesus used to talk about, to the Father, and Father used to tell him, tomorrow you're going to raise Lazarus from dead. I said this to you. And he was able to do it. And he knew it already. Who... Uh, God the Father gave the command and the Holy Spirit raised the Lazarus from dead. Even Jesus was raised from dead by Holy Spirit himself. Amen. So and he will tell you, uh, then he says, but whatever he hears, he will speak. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. Understand Holy Spirit will speak to us. Now the question to you is how he speaks, that's what we're going to deal with. I'm going to talk about uh, the introduction 
uh, about Holy Spirit. In the second part, I will actually give you a few ways in which Holy Spirit will speak to you how you can hear the voice of the Lord, how you can commune with Him. This is my target. I hope I'll be able to do that for you today. And you will go from here to, to, uh, by getting some understanding how you're going to have that fellowship with Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, let me complete this scripture. And He will tell you things to come. The future will be revealed to you. Now, every one of us are interested to know our future. Things, what happens to us, what's going to come to pass with our children, with our jobs, with our health, and all those things. And Holy Spirit will do. But we all do not know it, even though He's dwelling in us. The only reason is because we do not have that fellowship with Him. Right? If you have fellowship with Him, everything, He will tell you many things. Some of you know certain things, of course. It's not that you do not know. You know certain things. And book of 1 John. Epistle of John, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 20. The other day, Jasper also read this for you. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing. What it says, this is a beautiful verse. I love it. You all have an anointing. I want to confirm this to you again. You all have an anointing. Do you know that? You agree? Why I want to confirm to you is, the day you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that's it, Holy Spirit came in. When Holy Spirit came in, anointing means to rub on you. The power of Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit has been rubbed into you. He began to stay with you. That's the reason you believe that Jesus Christ is Son of God and He died for you on the cross. The reason, just because Holy Spirit make, make you do that. In the same chapter, same chapter, chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. Means again, He always stays with you in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. In reality, anyone need not teach you all the time. He keeps on teaching you. Anyone teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And is true. And is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. Hallelujah. This is a beautiful word. I love these two scriptures because the anointing is in me. He helps me. But He helps me only when I commune with Him. He helps me only when I have fellowship with Him. Because He does not force His rules or His teachings upon you. He is gentle. He is there. As far as you ask Him, as far as communicate with him. He will talk to you. Now, why do you have this anointing? Why on, on, on earth, why God chose to give you? There's a scripture, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. I'm giving you lots of scriptures because I don't want to say anything by myself so that you know that God has spoken this in his word. So it is not from me. It is from the word of the Lord. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Okay, when did you do this? The day you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you said to yourself and to God, I am leaving this world behind. The world behind me, the cross before me. So you have chosen to be righteous with God. You left all your lawlessness. Uh, what it says, you, ha you hated lawlessness and loved righteousness. Therefore, God, your God, anointed you. Amen? The reason God anointed you is you chose Jesus as your personal Savior. With the oil of gladness and more than your companions. Not only just anointing, you have been given joy. Oil of gladness has been poured and anointed you. Wonderful verse. Keep that in your heart. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us is God. So every one of you are anointed. Is that clear to you all? There's none here. Only if there is somebody here who do not know Jesus Christ as his personal savior, then you may be not anointed with Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you are anointed with Holy Spirit. Verse 22. Who also sealed us and given us spirit in our heart as a guarantee. This I want to talk to you. The Holy Spirit, the day I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, my experience in the Holy Spirit, one thing happened to me. I knew I am not serving an imaginary God. He is real, He is powerful, and He is 
tangible. I can feel, I can experience the power of God in me. So that becomes a kind of guarantee. I am not worshipping an idol or I am not uh, worshipping some imaginary power or anything like that. He is real and is right now dwelling inside of me. That's my first response I had. Oh my God, this God is real. I've been worshipping him, him, but today I have experienced his power tangibly in, within my body. And so it's a guarantee. Holy Spirit also is a guarantee for you until you reach that day, either your death or when Jesus comes and takes us as a church home, is a kept as a guarantee, a protector, that surely you are going to go into eternal life with God in His kingdom. Amen. One more verse about guarantee. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. There's one reason why we should not grieve. And how not to grieve is the rest of the verses, which I'm not going to talk about. That's not the subject today. But do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You can do anything you can do, but if you grieve Holy Spirit, He will be grieved. One thing I want you to know, even if you grieve Him, He does not leave you. Does not leave you. Hello? Even if you grieve Holy Spirit, He will not leave you. Is that right? Why? Why? promise. He will abide you in you forever. So God doesn't change his promise. Okay? But he will be grieved. I mean he will be inside of you grieving inside of you. And he says do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Hallelujah. That's again a guarantee. You are sealed by Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. So you don't have to live on earth. As far as you begin to have that fellowship with, with Holy Spirit, you, you know that you are chosen and separated and going to make it for eternal life. You will not lose your way. Not like somebody says, once you believe in Jesus, it's automatically you are inheriting the kingdom. It doesn't happen so. You have to keep on continuing the fellowship with Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit helps us to see things what God has kept for us in store. I also uh, shared this verse last time, but I want to say it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But it's written, I has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. First, ask yourself, do you love God? If you love God, God has kept some things in store for you. However, you know, most of the parents here, many of your parents, you prepare things for your children, don't you? Some of you have done great things. Some of you may not or, or wanting to do. You still not have begun to do things because your children may be still small. But you, maybe you're preparing a house. You're buying some property. Some of you would have kept some funds and reserve for their education, for their marriage, and so many things. You don't normally tell your children when they are small, they don't know what it is. But you have done it. In the right time, what you have kept for them, it will come to them. It will reveal to them in their own way. However, what God has kept for us, our eyes have not seen. They don't see. We cannot see them because they're spiritual things. Years, nobody told us. And even our heart cannot comprehend. However, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Okay? God has revealed them through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. I want to go further a little bit more. For what man knows, verse 11, the things of a man except the Spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So Holy Spirit is the only person who knows what God has kept for you. Not only what God has kept, whatever is going inside of God's heart. No one knows, but Holy Spirit knows. There's a verse that we probably read last week uh, that is uh, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 onwards. It says there are secrets. God will not, not only 29, 11, but uh, 33, 3. He will give us the secrets. There are some secrets God wants to give it to us. 
maybe some secrets for me and some secrets for Vani and some secrets for Sister Vandana and for this little child. You know, the secrets which you do not know because you're having fellowship with Holy Spirit, He will make you know and that secret will help you do something extraordinary in your life that will bless you and lift you up. So that is possible. And those secrets are known only to God and to Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit searches the heart of the Father. Amen. And verse 13, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Remember, anything that says spiritual that doesn't have a body, it cannot be felt, seen. That's right. Spirits, spiritual things cannot be seen or felt. However, you can discern in your heart, in your mind, because your spirit, your own spirit has the ability to discern. And verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit. Natural, we are all natural people. Initially, we are natural people. But those of you who are anointed by the Holy Spirit, you are also spiritual people. So natural people, those who do not know God, they cannot receive the things of spirit. But they are foolish to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. You can discern them spiritually. The God's things which you don't feel, don't see, don't hear. You can discern them spiritually. Verse 15. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I don't know whether you have it or not. You have the mind of Christ. If you follow him, if you listen to him, you have the mind of Christ. Okay. Only if the fellowship with the Holy Spirit will give us access to the secrets and the teachings of God. And it is very important for us to understand. And also, only fellowship with Holy Spirit will give us understanding that we are children of God. Let me give this scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. Romans 8, 16. It says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Do you know how you know that you are children of God? Do you know in the first place you are children of God? And if you know, how do you know? You are saying, you are calling God Abba Father. Father, you are calling Him all the time. Because Holy Spirit anointing is in you. And He bears with your spirit that you all, yourself, are child of God. Verse 17, if children, then heirs. And heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we indeed suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Because we follow Jesus, we face suffering in this world. And we should accept it in our lives. It is not, it, it was taught very wrongly sometime back. Oh, when you come to Jesus, everything will be perfect. It's not so. We go through suffering, accept it. And if you suffer with him, you will be glorified. Okay, that's not the subject today. So let's go for further more. Holy Spirit speaks to us on behalf of God. On behalf of God, Holy Spirit speaks to us. And I already mentioned this verse to you from John chapter 16, verse 13. He hears from the Father. He hears what he hears. He speaks to us. Means in other words, Holy Spirit is the one who conveys the message from God to us. So we need Holy Spirit even more. And then, uh, Acts, then there are instances, there are many, many. I'll just mention one or two for you. How Holy Spirit was actually leading the church. In the book of Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. Book of Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. Now in the church that was at Antioch, uh, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who, were, who was called Niger, Lucius, Cyrene, Manaen, and uh, uh, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Now, get this word. They ministered to the Lord. You know, ministering to the Lord, serving God. Am Bhagwan ka seva karte hain, Hindi mein, Telugu, Devan seva chas kanam. 
<laughs> so, what it means is serving, ministering to God. When you fast, listen to this. When you fast, you are ministering to God. Have that in your heart. When you are fasting and waiting on God, you are ministering to God. What it says is, uh, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And by fasting and praying, you are ministering to the Lord. And what happened? The Holy Spirit said, now I want you to catch something here. When you fast and a separated time for God, and when you are in the presence of God, Holy Spirit speaks. Said means what? He spoke, right? So Holy Spirit speaks in that kind of situations. Fasting and praying makes an opening for you to have fellowship with Holy Spirit. You can actually hear the voice of Holy Spirit. That's what they did. And then it says, Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So Holy Spirit was leading the church. Even in our church, Holy Spirit must lead. And sometimes we get instructions. We get guidance by a word, by the word of knowledge, by, by a prophetic word or a word of wisdom. Holy Spirit is speaking to our church people also here in this place. Not only in that way, in while preaching, some things are uh, revealed to you. And then, uh, and one more example, uh, same book, book of Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Now they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia. They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. For some place, Holy Spirit said, go. To other place, Holy Spirit tells you not to go. Now just just, just just, imagine, some of you are very eager to do the work of the Lord. Uh, there are some very people, some people here are very excited to do the work of the Lord. I know some people are. They want to do anything for God. But sometimes Holy Spirit will tell you not to do what you thought was the work of God. Alright? You know why? He knows all things. He knows the will of the Father. He knows the circumstances. He knows what's happening in the world because He's God. So where you should not go, where you should go, where you should be, all these things He can instruct you time to time. Hallelujah. Amen. So I brought to you a place where you understand the importance of Holy Spirit. Now I want to take you to the ways uh, in which Holy Spirit will communicate to us. Right. Let me take you through some scriptures. Book of Ezekiel chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. How Holy Spirit will communicate to us. The ways in which He will do. Book of Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. And He said to me. Now He, who is He? I'll tell you. Son of man. The He is calling Ezekiel. Son of man. Stand on your feet. And I will speak to you. Next, next verse. Then the Spirit entered me when He spoke to me. Now get this word. Spirit. Entered me when he spoke to me. Now who spoke to him is in the previous chapter. Book of Ezekiel uh, chapter 1 verse 28. Verse 28. Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day. So was the appearance of the brightness of brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard a voice of one speaking. He heard only voice. Now he says the glory of God. And this was the throne. If you read the whole chapter from the beginning, this was the vision given to Ezekiel. So now, what Ezekiel is hearing is not a voice that could be audibly heard. It's, he was in the vision still. You get, get this for understanding? When you have a vision, you audibly don't hear. You hear the voice of Holy Spirit in your spirit, in a vision. So vision, okay, keep this in your heart. And uh, okay, now one more time. Same book, book of Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 24. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me. So I want you to get one point here. When Spirit wants to speak to you, He has to enter you. Okay? Okay, one more scripture I'll take you for that purpose. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. 
John speaking here. I was in the spirit. There are one thing. Spirit is with you. He is in you. And according to Jesus' promise, uh, book of John 14 verse 20, that we, we are in Jesus. Jesus is in us and Jesus is in the Father. In this way, Jesus made an integral part of the Trinity. We are not the Trinity, fourth person in the Trinity or whatever you call fourth uh, Trinity, four means tetra, whatever so it is. Uh, but we are being made one with them through communion with Jesus Christ because we have been uh, connected and added into Jesus through communion. When we take our communion, his flesh and his blood, what happens is we're becoming one with Jesus and Jesus is in the Father and the Holy Spirit is in them. They are Trinity. So we become one with them. So what is this? I was in the Spirit. John says, and the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice. So when the Spirit, when he was in the Spirit, he heard. So in order to hear the Spirit's voice, he has to be in you. You get this? To hear what the Spirit is speaking to you, he has to be in you. Now question to you, is the Spirit in you? Yes? Okay. Now you have all the possibilities that you can hear the voice of the Spirit. Unlike the prophets in those days. It used to happen them time to time. So, like this, the Spirit is in you and is there permanently with you. You know, now in this scripture it says in uh, Revelation 1.10, I was in the Spirit. What it means to be in the Spirit? Let's go to what it means to be in the Spirit. Let's try to understand this with some scriptures. Book of Acts chapter 10 verse 9. Book of Acts chapter 10 verse 9. Now here is Peter. The next day as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up to the housetop to pray. Now it's Peter. Went, went, he went to pray about the sixth hour. You know what is sixth hour is? Anybody knows what is sixth hour means? What time it could be? No. Okay. Accord, not nine, not nine. According to the Jewish system, the first hour starts at 6 a.m. Sixth hour is 12 o'clock, noon time. Right? So as we read the, the, uh, the Jesus' crucifixion, you'll find that, you know, when sixth hour and ninth hour, he was actually, you know, the, uh, from 12, uh, sixth hour to ninth hour, you know, there was darkness. That's what it says. So this was midnight, midday. Right. So sixth hour. Now it's only 12 o'clock and he's already hungry. What he was? How it can be possible, 12 o'clock, you can be hungry if you had breakfast? If it is so, you should all must be hungry by now. I hope you are not hungry. Right. Okay. Now, he was hungry. And then what happened? Verse 10. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. He actually wanted to eat, but he was in the prayer time. But while they made food ready, he didn't want to waste time. He was connected with the Spirit. He fell into a trance. I want you to understand this. Being in the Spirit is almost getting or getting into uh, 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 an experience of trance means losing contact with your natural intellect. That's what is trance is. So how does this happen? When you go into deep prayer time, this can happen to you. And these are the times you will see visions. When you go into trance, you see visions. And then we know that uh, Peter saw, I saw heavens open. So this is a vision you don't see with your natural ears. You see it with your spiritual ears. Now, I'm just quickly going because time is less. I'm going, there are a few ways about, uh, I've, I've, I've written down eight ways. Holy Spirit communicates with us eight ways. One is visions. Visions is pictures and imaginations. He will speak to us in visions. And that is pictures and imagination will show us not with our natural eye. He shows us. We can see. I, I was telling some people. Now we can close your eyes and you can see whatever you want to see. Some of you, your parents are far away or not anymore in the world. You want to see them. Just close your eyes and you can see their face. Can you? Can you? Yeah. That's vision. That's actually vision. Okay. Let's go quickly. Second, dreams. He also speaks to people in dreams. I'll tell you the scriptures for that. And through prophecy. Uh, in, uh, 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 I mean, prophecy uh, uh, through somebody or indirectly in a fellowship. 
I mean, it's an indirect fellowship. It means somebody will speak to you through prophecy. That's possible. A prophecy com coming in the church and so on. And through tongues and interpretation. Sometimes you will have tongues yourself. You speak in tongues while you're praying, your personal prayer. And interpretation comes to you on the spot. And actually, you will speak those words and you will hear your own voice. This is an experience. And I had this experience, so I can talk about it very clearly. Uh, some of the time, we'll do some practical experiences on this. You speak in tongues, you'll get interpretation on the spot, on the same time. That what God wants to speak to you. That's one way. The other way, somebody in the church speaks in tongues, other person interprets. That is for the church, mostly to edify the church. So this is how Holy Spirit speaks. And number five, to the inner spirit of a person through inspiration. It comes as an inspiration. When you, uh, when, I mean, when you host Holy Spirit inside of you, He inspires you. I'll quickly give an example to you. Long ago, uh, when I was really very much too much on, on fire on Holy Spirit, in the morning I was just going to my work. One person the previous day visited me as a salesperson of a company. Now as I was walking on the road, on the other side of the road, I saw that person. And he saw me. And we both waved hand. And as I was going, and I suddenly felt the Spirit telling me, I felt inspiration, call him today. I went to office after finishing my job, I called him. I said, I don't know why, but this is what I was feeling, I must call you. I don't know what the reason is, this something looks like more spiritual. The man said, I think I should come and see you. And he came to me. He shared with me some of very interesting, so way he, he was in this final, no, sorry, fourth year of uh, MBBS. He left it because of certain situations. He was far away from God. God actually brought him back and brought him to this country. And a lot of things he shared with me. That man continued with me all the time. He was a Catholic. He was going to Catholic church, but he always attended our fellowship. And he would come to have fellowship with me. I used to be like, uh, you know, a friend close to him to walk in the Lord from that day forth. So God inspired me to speak to him. So similar, I had other experiences, but I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I will not have time on that. Number six, through the uh, spiritual voice, which can be heard only by spiritual ear. Through the spiritual voice, which can be heard only by spiritual ear, not by this ear. You suddenly hear, or actually you're sitting, suddenly you feel like somebody's telling you something, do this. And you're thinking, who's telling me? The same voice will speak to you again inside of you. And you'll know it. When you have an intense relationship with Holy Spirit, you'll have this kind of experiences. And then, number seven, with audible voice, very rarely. With audible voice, very, very rarely. Because you don't need, the Christians don't need to hear audible because they are supposed to have spiritual connection with God. Mostly this happens to those who are not actually Christians, but God wants to call them because they had Desire to know God, God will speak to them audibly. Let's take example, Samuel, little Samuel, when he was a little boy, God called him audible voice. Abraham was called by audible voice because he's a heathen man. Noah still didn't hear God and it was, he cannot have connection with the Holy Spirit. God called him with audible voices. And number eight, through the word of God. Through the word of God. I could have given a, a big illustration, but we don't have time. Now quickly I want to take a few scriptures that... How is is going to speak to us through prophecy? Uh, the scripture for that is Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy and old men dream dreams and young men shall see visions. If you are dream, seeing dreams, you must call yourself an old man. If you are seeing visions, you are a young man. Okay? How many of you are seeing visions here? No young people here, looks like. No young men. <laughs> There's only one man. Okay. So, and your young men will see visions and your children will prophesy. That's what he says. And uh, there are more other scriptures. Then we know how they spoke with tongues. And then we know uh, in Acts 19.6 and John 6.63, uh, Jesus says, The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So every the word itself is uh, a Holy Spirit speaking to us. Uh, and things, knowing in the spirit, knowing in the spirit. Jesus always used to say, it says, it's written, for example, uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. Jesus knowing their thoughts, even though they never told them, 
Jesus knew by the Spirit of the Lord. Similarly, another scripture we have is uh, from book of Luke. Right, I want to just talk to you. These are the ways in which Holy Spirit will speak to you. Okay? Eight ways. If you have noted it, it's good. If not, listen to this message again when it comes onto YouTube. What I want to tell you is, Holy Spirit want to have fellowship with you. In order to have fellowship with Holy Spirit, you must learn to practice. You must learn to practice to have fellowship with Holy Spirit. It happens mostly when you are alone. Your personal prayer time. You can go into trance sometimes. When you deeply pray for a length of time, maybe you are fasting and praying, you can have fellowship with Holy Spirit. He will speak to you. It happens like this. You know how to talk. You need to initiate talk with Holy Spirit. When you are alone, if you are driving, if you are doing your cooking at home, just sit down and begin to speak to God, Holy Spirit with your audible voice. Not in your mind. What did I say? Speak to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you know, I know you are with me. I want to talk to you. Tell me more things about God. What God wants me to do today. What God wants, where God wants me to go. If you are in sales, you are a person who wants to go sales, don't know where to go. Tell God, Holy Spirit, Take me to a place where I can get a good business. And if you're going for a good big uh, business meeting, God, I want, I mean, tell Holy Spirit to give you wisdom to talk to the people that you're meeting. And similarly, any question concerning your day-to-day -day life, you can ask Holy Spirit. And about, I was talking about the future vision, you can ask Holy Spirit, what's going to come to pass in the future? And He's the one who's going to reveal the future to you. And you keep asking as you keep asking, I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, when you are talking to a person, person is responsible to answer you back. I want to tell you, in your spirit, he will speak to you. You will begin to hear a kind of thing like this. My son, my daughter, this is what I want you to do. You will get as a revelation in your heart. Keep doing it. It's a practice. If you begin it today, and begin to practice and rest of the day. Holy Spirit, I want to have this fellowship with you. I don't want to leave you alone. Because now Holy Spirit is a person living with you, inside of you. But you are not talking to Him. You are leaving Him alone in His own way. You are actually neglecting the presence of God in your life. You want to do your own things. Of course, when you are doing seriously some business, you don't have to talk to Him. You can still feel Him if you want to. But Take time to communicate with Holy Spirit either through word or through spirit and sometimes through dreams and visions, Holy Spirit will speak to you. But you need to continuously initiate conversation with Holy Spirit. This is what I want to stress upon your hearts this morning. Initiate it in the presence of God. You talk to Him and you praise Him, worship Him. And while you are sitting in His presence, initiate conversation with Him. And he will answer you through his spirit. And sometimes he will tell you, read the word. I, okay, let me quickly say this uh, example. I was uh, recently had a, 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 a temptation to take a loan. For a very important purpose, take a loan. I thought I should ask somebody. This was going in my urge. Then, but at the same time I knew I normally don't want to take loan. Because I believe God will provide my needs. Then I begin to ask God, God, you know, tell me, should I? Should I do this? Because if I do this, I was going to get an advantage. If I take that loan and pay up certain things, I'm going to be at financial advantage. Then I ask God. Then I had this feeling immediately, read the word. Now read what word? I just took the Bible, opened it randomly. Just open, I'm not, I do not put my hand and open it. I just opened it. And suddenly, book of Isaiah came, chapter 2. I read the whole chapter. Nothing was coming to me. I said, I will read. God will speak to me somewhere. Someone said, and recently I, heard, I read a, a caption, somebody saying, read until God speaks to you. That time I didn't know that. But I was just reading. I came to the last verse. Now listen to this. Savior yourself from such a man whose breath is in his nostrils, for, for of what account is he? 
Because I was looking for help from a man means instead of God. This immediately, this thought came into me. God is speaking to me. Immediately after that, I was reading from my book, this Bible, not from phone. And, and the, the reference note, uh, reference verse next to that was given to me. Suddenly, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. I quickly ran to Jeremiah 17, 5, 17, 5. Can you read, put that for me? Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. So, the help I was going to take was from a man. Now it says, now straightforward, exactly to the point God has spoken to me. Of course, my help will come from man, but it will be initiated by God, not by me. Man or various places, when help comes, various ways the help will come. A man will be used or something will be used. But he knows how to do it. It's not me putting trust in a man rather than God. And God doesn't like that. So God actually, through his word, clearly spoke to me when I put my heart and asked him. So through word, God will speak to you. It's very, very clear. Such a clear uh, experience that I had with the word. I had no clue what I was reading, how I was reading, but I went on and just God led me to the right and exact word. One minute, my mind was cleared. I have no confusion anymore about what I was thinking. No more temptation. I was cleared. So Holy Spirit will speak to you some or the other way if you set your heart to speak to Holy Spirit. This morning, Let's take a few minutes, brothers and sisters. I just want you to connect with Holy Spirit. Connect with Holy Spirit. I want you to do this few minutes even as we softly sing a song or just close our eyes. And I, what I want you to do is tell Holy Spirit, I neglected you. Maybe I speak to you sometimes. I've been neglecting you most of the times. Lord, I want to connect with you. Perpetually, I want to have this fellowship with you continuously. I want you to do this as a small little exercise. We have only a few minutes, maybe five minutes. That's what we will do. And learn to connect with Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, some of you will have an interaction with Holy Spirit right now in this place. You'll not go without having that. You'll begin to feel the, the confidence in your heart. Holy Spirit is actually communicating with you. Some a vision, some a thought, you begin to feel connected. Just close your eyes and you can stand up as you like and as, as you want to do this. Thank you, Jesus. And as we sing this song softly, I want you to take time connecting with Holy Spirit. Speak to Him. If you want, you can audibly speak to Him. Thank you, Jesus.
conversation with the Holy Spirit this morning. Call Him. Tell Him that you love Him. You need Him more. You need to have that fellowship. You want to establish this connection. Just speak to Him audibly. Tell Him, Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you every day. Every day. You, you tell Him, whenever I'm free, I want to talk to you. I want to hear you, Lord. I want to have this experience. This must be your strong desire right now in your heart. It must be a desire coming. You know, we talked about encounter. This, some, some of these things will be real to you when you come to this encounter. Holy Spirit will talk to you. Give you power and strength to hear Him. The presence of God is moving in this place. Begin to hear Him. Begin to hear Him right now. He is talking to you. You can hear a small still voice. He's telling to someone, My son, I never left you. I know. If you hunger and thirst for me, I will always talk to you. To someone, My child, my daughter, I'm with you. Call me. Anytime you call me, I will answer you. Yes, He will speak to you. He will reveal the secrets of God, the plans of God, the future things for you. He should become number one in your life. You must host Him in your house. When you invite a guest, the way you serve Him, the way you offer the things that you have, the best things in your house, maybe the food, maybe the drinks, the best things you give it to your guest. Similarly, you need to host Him in your house with your love with your love for Him, with your honor for Him, God will do something in your life, my brother, my sister. You will have testimonies next week to share in this place how Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. Whatever you may be going through in your life, Holy Spirit will bring an answer for you. The steps that you need to take, He will give you step-by-step -step guidance in your situation. Holy Spirit is here in this place. He's touching you. But some of you are asking him, Lord, I've been asking for this healing for such a long time. Can you touch me and heal me now? Holy Spirit will touch you right now, wherever you are. He will. Faith is important. Because spiritual things, you cannot feel it in your body. It happens in the spirit and your spirit gets connected. And he's the one who listens to all the conversations. So, let it happen in the spirit. But faith is important. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, Let us submit to Holy Spirit. God wants to do something in this church from this day forth spiritually do something I'll, I'll try to put a reminder for you in your whatsapp did you speak to Holy Spirit today when you see that immediately begin to converse have conversation with Holy Spirit I may try to do it even more times did you speak to Holy Spirit did you have fellowship maybe you need that help it looks like but God will surely speak to you. You will have strong, powerful testimonies in the days to come. You need to learn that way in which you should have that conversation. You will. You need, you need to practice it every day. And God will help you in that. Only thing that you need is a strong desire. Father, we thank you, Lord Master God, for speaking to us, teaching us how we can have fellowship with Holy Spirit. Father, lead us and guide us, Father God. For everyone I pray, not even one child should miss, Father God. Everyone should learn to have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit to learn things from you, Father God. We give you glory, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray, Lord. Amen.